Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in Arcadia in the San Gabriel Valley in the greater Los Angeles area, home to one of the biggest and most vibrant Asian, especially Chinese communities in the United States. Today I'm gonna meet up with my friend Jing. Jing, I think it's the platonic ideal of Dana noodles. She's originally from Chengdu in Sichuan, and she's just a lot of fun to hang out and eat with. So we're gonna take you on a Chinese food tour. We're gonna eat Sichuan food. Uh, it's perfect, 10 out of 10. <laughs> I'm gonna just melt in my chair. Mm. We're gonna eat some amazing spicy noodles. We're gonna have a unique hot pot. Wow, that chili oil. It's just gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of delicious Chinese food, and I'm gonna share it all with you right now in this video. And we were just remembering, we had originally met, I think we met the first time at one of Jeffrey's events for Extreme Foodies in London? About 10 years ago. About 10 years ago. And then wild. in Singapore. I think at that time you were living in Chengdu. Yeah, or, or Shanghai. Or Shanghai. But traveling oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. around, yeah, yeah. But you got me so interested and so excited about Sichuan food and yeah. cuisine and telling me about the chili oils and mm -hmm. telling me about the Sichuan pepper and spices. So from that time that we met, I remember that I was like, I have to go to Chengdu. Oh, yeah. We still need to make that happen. Yes. Well, you've been there, I, So right? I've been. You've been, yes. But we still gotta go but together. But we gotta go together, yes. yes. Also, I wanna say oh, that yeah. um, we met 10 years ago, but we both, I think, look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, <laughs> it's the I Asian. have a few gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Since we've last met, mm -hmm. I think Jing has done so many cool things. I mean, you've promoted Sichuan food and culture. You write, you've been in videos, you've been in documentaries and TV. And now you I have, have a hot sauce company. You have your own hot sauce company, Fly yeah, by Jing, yeah. Chili Oil. Also opened two restaurants. You opened two restaurants? Yeah, in Shanghai. You know, I was born in Chengdu, but I grew up in like eight countries across Europe and Canada. And so it wasn't until I was in my 20s that I moved to China that I realized how disconnected I had become. It wasn't until I was in China that I realized, like in my 20s, that I realized how much of myself and my identity I'd also suppressed, right? Just in order to, you know, um, to, to kind of please everyone else, right? And so um, the food thing really began as a way for me to reconnect with my roots. But then the more I was doing it, the more I wanted, I realized like how little people outside of China knew about Chinese food and this culture and the cuisine and the 5,000 year heritage. So it started Fly by Jing, um, which, you know, Jing, my name obviously, but Fly is actually a reference to a type of restaurant in Chengdu called Fly Restaurants, oh, yeah. which these are hole in the walls that are so delicious that mm. they are said to attract people like flies. Anyway, so long story, <laughs> launched the Kickstarter. Kickstarter and that year I moved to LA, left behind my life in Shanghai where I was for almost 10 years and started Fly by Jing as a sauce company. So love what Jing is doing and Looks like the first dish has arrived. Yeah. Chengdu impression, yes. which is where we're at. Do you come here? This is often? my favorite. Oh, okay, uh, cool. Sichuan restaurant. Quite, you know, it's like upscale, right? But the flavors are just so on point. And this dish is an appetizer. It's um, uh, like a spicy mung bean noodle appetizer. Well, feel free to like mix it up. I'll take mix a video. It? Okay. Yeah. Feel how light and delicate. Oh, <laughs> yeah. did I splatter you? No, no, no. You're good. Okay. You're good. <laughs> okay. Oh, that chili oil is so incredibly. Well, they don't keep these white tablecloths white for very long. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, you can smell the vinegar in there. It's mm -hmm. the chili oil. That is even the whooshing sound of those noodles being. Mmm. 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 Mm hmm. <laughs> The balance, right? Wow. And they just kind of melt in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Totally melt exactly. in your mouth. Exactly. This one, um, you just, uh, you know, take Should one of those little okay. flatbreads. Take a little flatbread. And stuff it with. Oh, stuff it. Yeah. And so is that, is that chicken on the bottom there? 
It's it's no. beef with oh, like tripe, with tripe and oh, wow and some Chinese celery. Wow. Thin like paper thin paper slices thin. of beef. Mm -hmm. Tripe in there. There's peanuts in there. You see chili oil, mm -hmm. sesame seeds. Oh, I'm gonna wow. stuff. Yeah. Okay. You even stuff like everything in there. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. No problem. <laughs> Too excited. <laughs> yes. Mm. Mm. So this is mm. so good. Oh my god. Oh wow. Wow. <laughs> the flavor. Like it looks the same as that, but it tastes completely different, right? Totally different. Mm -hmm. It's more nutty. Yep. It's It's got like this more so herbally taste from the braised uh, beef. That is unbelievable. Mm. I want to swim in that chili oil bath. Mm. And even the texture of the bread is perfect. Somehow it holds up mm -hmm. with the liquid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All those appetizer meats. platter. Mm -hmm. All right, appetizer platter. Yeah. Do a little. I'll go, with that. I'll go with a pig ear. Mm. Just a little dip. Oh wow, the flavor is amazing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like that, <laughs> that depth of braising yeah. herbs and yeah. soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Then paired with that dry rub chili. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All the ears are wonderful too. That dry rub is so good. So good. I think it's actually the combination of the two because the salty meats mm -hmm. plus that dry rub that just yep. like it's a harmony all together at mm -hmm. once in your mouth. And we're just getting started. <laughs> we're just getting started. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yes. Jean did all the ordering. Yeah. I didn't even look at. I didn't even look at the menu. <laughs> I just went crazy, <laughs> as I always do. Yes. yes. The aroma of the dry chili. This is the definition of happiness on a table. Right. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Um, bullfrog. Bullfrog in like a kind of like a, a sour and hot broth. The flavor profile of this one has is features like ginger. So it's like ginger and some fermented chilies, as you can see here. Uh -huh. And so that's like the dominant uh, profile. Dino bone beef. Dino rib. bone beef. Rib, yeah. <laughs> dino bone beef. Rib. Look at how clean the bone is. Right. This is a fermented mustard green uh, sliced fish, and also the vermicelli is like a oh, great yeah. part at the end. You know. Wow. So much okay. flavor. Yeah. I mean, you can if you want to. But, but it would get salty, yeah. It would get yeah. salty. And mm -hmm. So mainly you, mainly you take like a little bit like sauce, but you don't really drink the soup. You kind of like mm -hmm. re-dip, you can rehydrate. It's the ultimate in rehydration. Mm -hmm. And you see the citron peppercorns swimming around in there as well. It's so good. Mm. 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 Unbelievably good. Again, it's like melting yeah. your mouth. It's so delicate. So delicate. Oh. So much flavor. That acidity, the pickled chilies in there too. Mm, yes. There's a few of them. So rich, wow. you know. The fishy broth, mm. that brightness of the citron peppercorns. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And the, the, the noodles. The quality of that. Mm hmm. Wow. wow. That is stunning. Mm. Mm. I can't wait to try that frog. You said there's ginger in here, there's the pickled chilies, and again, mm -hmm. of course, citron chili. Sichuan peppercorns in here as well. Mm -hmm. Look, at that. <clears throat> Look at that chunkiness. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, with those strips of ginger. Yeah. Wow. Another award winning frog dish. <laughs> wow. And then you got little bits of like skin, meat. Loaded out with Sichuan pepper crunch. And then and here finally. we have Kung Pao shrimp. And Kung Pao, like actual Sichuan Kung Pao is very, very different from like the Kung Pao in the US, right? This is like the Sichuan's like original style of Kung Pao, right? So you'll see not that much sauce. It's basically a balance of like soy sauce, vinegar, um, some sugar, chili oil. Mmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sweet but balanced. And you really get that scorched chili flavor. So they would it's put oil, in oil. 
they let that the, smoke out and the dried chili. Dried chili's good, so that just infuses mm -hmm. the flavor. Mm. Oh yes, my favorite. That's my favorite too. <laughs> I said that about oh, everything. I was like, <laughs> yeah, you said that about like, at least six things on the table. <laughs> but don't worry, <laughs> I don't blame you at all. This one is uh, numbing oh, spicy. Thank you. Some. Numbing spicy. Yeah. Oh, man. Not only is it one of my favorite Sichuan dishes, it's one of my favorite dishes in the oh, world. In the world. Like, of all time. I, yeah. Of all time. But it has to be a good version. It has to be good. A bad version is bad. There's many bad versions. Yes. And a bad um, version is bad. <laughs> and so what makes a mapo tofu great mm -hmm. is the sauce, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the foundation of the sauce is doubanjang, which is fermented fava bean paste. All right, all right. And the best That's what comes gives from it that depth of flavor. the depth, the depth. Yeah, right? Because it's been fermented. It's been fermented in these like clay urns for mm -hmm. sometimes up to years, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got layers of garlic, doubanjang, chili oil, <laughs> Sichuan pepper, and then usually it's like, you know, a stock that mm. goes into it. I yes. think I judge a Sichuan restaurant based on its mapo tofu. Yes. So. Right. I, I would fully, fully agree because it's something that every mm. every restaurant has. Yeah. But not even close to everyone can exactly. do Exactly. Well. Okay. Mm. Oh my god, it's oh. perfect. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> I'm gonna just melt in my chair. Mm. That is what other mapo tofu strive to be. Exactly. Even in Sichuan, you know, you don't get this level. And it's like such a simple dish, right? It's just tofu and a little bit of like beef. It's just tofu, but, but the flavor is in the doubanjang, right? The if do you've got doubanjang that's been that fermenting for years, then that's, that's how you get that. That is what it oh, takes. So this is Lao Ji, classic Sichuan dish. It is like chili pepper um, chicken. Mmm. 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 Oh, that like, that light batter on it. And it's been sitting here for a little bit, uh -huh. but it's still crispy on the outside yeah. and tender. That is fragrant, nutty. And the nutty flavor. And crispy. Mm. This is dandan dan noodles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so dandan dan noodles is really like characterized by the sauce once again. Um, and then there's a preserved vegetable that they have in it called ya cai. And this preserved vegetable, again, is adds so much depth of flavor. You know, if a dandan noodle does not have it in there, then yeah. it's, I think it's not a dandan noodle. <laughs> okay, and you think this is like really a good representation of what dandan noodles, <clears throat> noodles should be? I think it's the platonic ideal of dandan platonic noodles. Platonic ideal. Mm. 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 Right? Mm-hmm. Oh. When you take your first, first bite, you don't think it's going to be that flavorful. And it's not over peanutty. It's not. Sometimes, not sometimes they can be, be over peanutty. Yeah. I've had versions. Yeah. Those are like variations, but the Chengdu style doesn't have that oh. much. Yeah. I've had versions that are way too sweet too. Yeah. Everything in Just harmony. Just a snack, you know? Oh, it's delicious. It's yeah. extraordinary. And the mm. garlic in there. I taste the garlic too. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. Look at that chunk. And this should be also dipped in, looks like a similar mm -hmm. dry rub mm -hmm. to the pig ears. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's just melt in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Oozing from the fat. And mm. with that dry rub, you can just squeeze juice out of it. Oh. Let me do one more dip here. You can never have enough of that dry rub. Mm. Oh, man. The light cumin in that dry rub. You could not ask for anything more or less in this mapo tofu. It's everything you could possibly want. Mm -hmm. Not only in a mapo tofu, but everything you could want in life is right here in this bowl. <laughs> Comfort, satisfaction, yep. <laughs> happiness, joy. Mm. With rice. Oh man. As you dig down into that mapo tofu, the more, the more of the, the fermented bean paste you can taste. Unbelievable. The restaurant is called Chundu Impression. There's some similar names throughout LA, but this one is specifically Chundu Impression Sichuan Cuisine. That was an extraordinary meal. My mouth is tingling. I'm like 
at the happiness peak of my life at the moment. From here, we're gonna go to the next place for a bowl of noodles. Next stop on this food tour is Chongqing Special Noodle. Chongqing is, is it a province or is it a city? So Chongqing used to be part of Sichuan province, oh. and then they broke it off as its own municipality. So you know how Shanghai uh. is actually its own city state? City state, okay. So Chongqing became like that, and it's a huge uh. city. I think the population is somewhere around 30 million. The flavors of Chongqing cuisine would be similar to Sichuan. Similar. I would say what? there's definitely things that characterize it. Like it's got more of like, uh, a heat to it, whereas oh, okay. Chengdu is more about like balance okay. and restraint sometimes. But Chongqing is like the fiery, oh, you know, man. heat. We have a lot of dishes here. Okay, we have like a Chongqing. One of my favorites is like a hot and um, hot and sour noodle, which. Um, Again, it's very different from hot and sour that we think of in the U.S., right? But it's like Sichuan style hot and sour, which is usually like a bone broth with copious amounts of chili oil and vinegar. So it's like super balanced. And then uh, the noodle in it is usually a uh, sweet potato noodle. Mm. Mm. Try to get some of this. Mm. This pickled greens is really nice. Oh, it's nice and sour. Yeah, yeah. And are these, oh, these are not peanuts, these are like soybeans? Oh, there's little soybeans, yes. Soybeans, mm -hmm. okay. Crunchy. Wow. Mm. That is sour. Mm -hmm. Look, you're not expecting it to be that sour. Mm -hmm. Acidity from the fermented vegetables, the crispiness of the soybeans. The flavor wow. is like a punch. Amazing. Punch to the face. That is so good. <laughs> In a great way. Start, your mouth starts tingling a little yeah. bit from the Sichuan pepper. Condensed flavor. Mm -hmm. mm. Chongqing noodles, Chongqing right? Chongqing noodles, yes. Oh, All right. Wow, you can smell the strong pepper. Yes. And what type of meat would that be on top there? That should be pork. Pork with yeah. fried egg on top, some, mm -hmm. some bok choy. Yeah. Salt. Wow, these are long, tangly noodles. Too. Yeah. Long and tangly. Look at the size of these noodles. Okay. Mm. 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 A whole meal, you know, it's like with the egg. It's a complete breakfast. <laughs> yep. You know. And then you do taste that like almost citrusiness from the mm -hmm. Sichuan pepper. Yep. Mm -hmm. The dry chili in there. Yeah, and the pickled greens. Oh man, it's really it's good. It's really good texture on the noodles. It's not overcooked. Really good. Yep. Very chewy. I love just how tangly and long these noodles are as well. Yeah, the noodle here, the texture is very nice. Mommy, I can't get Usually, mm. the, this noodle, whenever mm -hmm. I've had it, even in Chongqing, is like overcooked mm. and soft. But this one's perfect. This one is, and the key to this Chongqing noodle is just keep on stirring it. Don't take the bite off the top because all the, all the flavor seeps below to the mm -hmm. bottom. So keep every bite, mm -hmm. stir that, give it a nice stirling, stirring whirl. Exactly. Grab off the bottom when it's juicy. Yep. And man, your That's lips, the technique. your lips will appreciate you <laughs> on on fizziness. Mm. Mm. That's delicious. With every bite, you crave more. You can see why people in, in Chongqing have that every day. Yeah. It's like yep. Breakfast. <laughs> yep. I can. I think I would be happy to eat a bowl of noodles like this for mm -hmm. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Again, what other bowls of noodles strive to have that much flavor? <laughs> yeah. And that flavor just builds. Your tongue starts to tingle. Your face starts to tingle. This was also a, a noodle place that was highly favored and loved by Jonathan Gold. And man, he knew his food. He promoted amazing small businesses like this great place in San Gabriel Valley. Okay, we've got one more place to go today and we're gonna finish with Hot Pot. We're 
We're in downtown Pasadena and we're gonna go to a place that serves a Chongqing variation of hot pot. Oh man, this place is great. They have a number of different soup bases, but the traditional Chongqing soup base, and you can choose mild, medium, and extra spicy. Of course, when you see extra spicy on the menu, you choose the extra spicy. So gonna do half of that and half miso base, and then from there you just uh, check mark all the toppings and ingredients and addings that you want. Oh, thank you very much. Now, one of the great things about hot pot is building your own sauce. Man, I tend to go a little overboard on the sauces, so I might ask her, oftentimes they have like one special sauce. I tend to like put in like 12 things, but I'm gonna ask maybe if they have a, a specialty Chongqing sauce. Oh, thank you, okay. Garlic. Yeah, and put the green onions. Green onions. Oh, sure, 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 okay. Oh, so. Oh, oyster sauce. And then sesame oil? Okay. So that combination. And a little bit of salt. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. A little more chilies to this. So we got the spicy soup base and we got the miso soup base on this side. Uh, bean curd skin, yeah? This is the which one? The marbled beef, okay. Oh, nice. The marbled beef, the marbled beef. But it's nice and actually quite lean, a little bit marbled, sliced thin, rolled up, and then we've also got some of the, the Angus ribeye, which also looks really good. And cooks within seconds. Oh man, I cannot wait. Mm. Oh wow. Oh, that is so tasty. Mm. It does have some good spice to it. And you really taste the citrusy poppiness, the vibrancy of the Sichuan peppercorn. And then immediately tingle on my tongue. Oh, that's what I love. Oh, that's spectacular. Wow. That soup base is so good, you don't even need the dipping sauce. Of course, dipping sauce never hurt anything. Oh wow, that is incredibly good. Man, that beef just absorbs that hot pot broth and that beef just melts in your mouth, so tender. Hot pot is one of the great meals of the world. Just so soothing, so fun, and so delicious all at the same time. For this one, I will do a dip in the sauce. A few extra chilies in there, some of that sesame oil. Mm. Mm. That's just the layering of flavors. That sesame oil just like encapsulates all of that flavor. Throw in some vegetables. Cooked lettuce is one of the most underrated vegetables. Okay, not totally sure. Yeah, okay, that's, okay, I'm pretty sure this is lettuce right here lettuce, it really wilts down. Oh, oh, that is hot. Mm. Yeah. Oh man. And you just breathe in the chili oil. Yeah, that spice builds. If you order the extra spicy here, man, it is perfect. A perfect level of spice. Looking back to the ribeye. I'm gonna do a dip, huh? I'm gonna dip into ying sauce. Ying sauce is more vinegar based. I think she only mostly added vinegar and all the chunky, delicious ingredients like sesame seeds, chilies, and green onions. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, with the vinegar, it's amazing too. But I think it's best just straight out of the soup. Then you've got the full flavor 
the full spice. Because actually when you, when you dip your meat into the sauce, it kind of wipes off some of that chili oil. Man, when you're taking it straight out of that pot, that spice builds, tingles your taste buds, and just like awakens you. Man, that's good. And it will clear out your nostrils, that's without a doubt. I've always loved bean curd. Mm. I love that chewy texture. Wow. That chili oil. But, oh, so hot, so good. So good, my breath is still like I can feel the hot oil on my breath as I speak. Oh, what a hot pot! Oh, yeah, and that completes that was an amazing food tour today. And I want to say a huge thank you to my friend Jing for showing us around for hanging out today. She's a lot of fun to eat with, and she's so knowledgeable about Sichuan cuisine, all, I mean all of Chinese food, but especially Sichuan cuisine, the ingredients that go into it, the foundation of it, and how it relates to culture. And yeah, I love what she's doing. Her sauce company, Fly by Jing, but she's doing really cool things and always good to hang out. So thank you very much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, leave a comment below, and also make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from... We're in Pasadena right now. See you on the next video.